Today is Adar 27, 5773 on the Hebrew calendar and March 9th, 2013 on the English calendar. And for those on YouTube, I'm going to explain again. I'm here because my father's sick and he's dealing with uh, his own issues. I don't really feel like I need to... <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm going to be uh, in his place. I, uh, as I explained to the congregation, I was uh, told about this about 6 o'clock last night, so I'm going to be just letting God lead me. So, well, what came about with much discussion with my fiance and with my mother and praying about it and considering it, um, basically what I really feel like I need to talk to you about today is something that, I don't know if we dubbed it this or if it came from a book or what, but it's definitely something that exists. It's something that we call the whiplash effect, which is basically where God's doing something. We all know God's doing something. We're in the middle of what God's doing, and it's awesome. And we feel victory. We know victory. We are in victory. And because God is in us, we are victory. But after that, something happens, and it seems like all, and literally all hell breaks loose against us. And we have been getting reports, and it's not just this week. It's been like the last month or so. We've been getting reports from people that things just keep happening to them over and over and over again. And some of it is outside of them. Some of it is actually within them. Um, but something's definitely happening. And what, and in thinking about this, it's all well and good to talk about the whiplash effect that the fact is when you do something for God that the enemy is going to respond. But there's also the question of what do you do about it? How do you, how do you respond? And uh, the scripture that came to me, and interestingly enough, I, you know, I was thinking about doing this and I, I talked to my mother about any resources that they had on scriptural basis of this particular concept. And she went to exactly the same scripture that had come to me. So, you know, to me that was significant. Let's uh, turn to Matthew 12, 43. Okay, it says, When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it travels to the dry country seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says to itself, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds a house standing, empty, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they come in and live there, so that in the end the person is worse off than he was before. This is how it will be for the, this wicked generation. And even though this is saying, you know, what it's saying is rather harsh, the whiplash effect happens whether or not you are actively trying to clear out and build for God and do what God wants. It's going to happen. That's just part of it. That is the worst scenario. That is someone who's completely and totally, they, they've gotten stuff out, but they've done nothing beyond that. They got it out. I mean, to be honest, it's kind of like our current, our current society very much today, which is, come, get saved. And then we stop. We stop telling you anything about what a life with God is about. And they get saved, so they've cleared stuff out. But after that, everything stops, and the flood comes right back in and tears everything up. I'm not wanting to talk necessarily about the worst case scenario. I'm wanting to talk about us. I'm wanting to talk about, I know that this group of people is not in the worst case scenario position. 
However, we do need to realize that when something is taken away, it is our responsibility to put in its place a structure that is of God. And typically what that entails is actually taking the pieces and parts the enemy was using to build something. Because normally, you know, there's the saying, the best truths have a little bit of lie, or no, the best lies have a little bit of truth in them. Typically those things are built around a truth, but it's warped. It's messed up. And really what we do is we, we take what the enemy has been using, anoint it, and reconstruct it in the way that God originally intended. A good, for instance, is one thing that a lot of people will get is from God is you're nothing. You have no power. Look at your life. How can you even do anything that God says? And that, that can bring someone down. Reconstruct it. Yes, Satan. I am nothing. But in God, I'm everything. And when I accept the fact that I am nothing, I can actually go beyond. Basically, he will try to build things, but you can use the very stones that he's using to build against you to build against him. And another thing that came to me is, and recently we, in our family, we dealt with something that was very similar to this. Uh, or we had someone who was very concerned that they had gotten back to an old place. But... What I realized was, and this was right after last weekend, which was awesome. What I realized was, the enemy is going to retaliate. And when he does, he is going to go for the places that is weakest. Where is the weakest place? The places that you are building. And I'm reminded, I mean, a long time ago, we, were, we had a season where we were very keyed into the rebuilding of Israel and I can't remember the guy's name. That's the problem with coming up without notes. Uh, huh? Nehemiah? And, and the fact that they had a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other. Yeah. It, we need to understand that those places that we're doing trowel work are the weakest place in the wall. And that is where the enemy is going to come at us. And when the feeling is going to be, if we do backtrack at all, the feeling is going to be like, I thought I had this down. I thought I'd fixed this. I thought this was healing. And now I'm doing it again. What, what's the deal? And we need to understand that is where the enemy is going to hit us. And we need to have not just the trowel, which is the healing. We need to have the sword. We need to have the ability that when he comes in on us toward that, in that place, we can turn right around him. Because what he's going to do is he's going to try to get you to do that old stuff. And then he's going to turn, because he's the accuser of the brethren, he's going to turn around and say, see, you've not changed. You are nothing but a failure this is all you are. This is your identity. And we need to have the sword to turn back around, face him, and say, No, I may have messed up. I may be dealing with this, but I know who I am. I know who I am in him. And this is not who I am. Who I am is what I'm building right now. You may have removed a few stones, but I'm going to keep building. That is who I am. And quite frankly, I think it would be beneficial to say out loud, and I know it, it seems kind of prudish, to actually visually see the enemy, see yourself turning toward him and saying, shut up. Be quiet. But the feeling that has been coming lately is we are about to go into battle. And we're already in battle, but the feeling I get is this is nothing compared to what we're about to go through. And if we can't hack it right now, we're not going to hack it then. And you know, I told you, I'm up here going, I feel tapped out and I was complaining to God. But everything I, every time I brought that to God, same thing came to me. He goes, what have you been saying? You've been saying if you can't hack it right now, you're not going to be able to hack it. So what are you saying? You're not going to hack it. You can't say that to everybody else and not do anything. So, you know... It, I'm catching my own words, which is the, the best way to be taught is actually to say something to someone else and then feel it go <laughs> right, right back in your own face. But uh, this, this is nothing compared. And one of the things I said 
when talking about this uh, was we're in a time where we're going to, God's trying to help us learn that we have to choose joy. We have to choose happiness in the midst of what we're going through because we're going to go through a time where I personally believe we're going to see people massacred. And we're going to have to choose joy. We're going to see physical manifestations look like we're failing on every front. And we're going to have to choose to keep going. We're going to have to choose to know that we're doing something in the spirit that can't be seen yet. We're going to have to choose to know that we can give hope to others even while inside we're mourning. And it, right now it stinks. It really does. But the sense I get is we, we have no clue. And the interesting thing is uh, me and my fiance ended up seeing a movie last night that <laughs> good point has some things that I wish didn't have in there. Let's just say that. But there's a scene. It basically is based on the idea that the United States finally gets invaded and what a group of people do about it. And I mean, the whole thing is, do you just turn on, you know, will this, will this society just roll over and play dead or will they actually do something about it and will we actually go back to fighting for freedom? Which is really, for our souls, that's what we're doing every single day, is we're fighting for freedom, not just for ourselves. Really, what we're supposed to ha do is have our freedom, know our freedom, be confident in our freedom, be fighting for freedom for others. But there is a scene where basically it's a bunch of kids. And that's really where we are as a nation, as a church. We are a bunch of kids. We don't, we haven't been in war, not for a very long time. And we're being called to war. And in fact, we're getting to a place where we're going to be forced into war. And once again, I don't think it will just be spiritual. We'll actually see things physically manifest. But there's one scene where there's one guy, he's a Marine, and he's helping these kids learn how to fight. And he makes a point, he says, pulling a trigger is easy. Holding it together is really what matters. And, and he chooses to shock them by shooting a bunch of weaponry while they're trying to cook. They're, they're not even ready for battle. They're, they're cooking, they're doing their everyday lives. And they freak out. And by the end of the scene, he has them so trained that if they hear the slightest thing, they're up, armed, and ready to go. And the feeling I get is, this whole thing is training to keep everything together. That basically, it, God's shooting off the guns, or rather, he's allowing the enemy to do all this stuff to see how we're going to react, to see if we'll actually hold it together. And if we're not, for him to come behind us and go, okay, let's do this again, you got to hold it together because when that comes, you're going to have to be able to have bullets raining all around you and still be center on me. But one other scripture that I thought of earlier. See, that's another problem of having problems with. I think also it would be significant. One of the parts I loved in the movie had to do with he said, it is a choice. And in relation to this movie is, you know, when you're fighting in another land, it's mm -hmm. hard because it's just another land. But if you're fighting at home, you are seeing the people you are protecting. You are seeing your home being invaded. And that really hit me significantly because I'm God. He is God. All of you are God. Earth. So when he comes in and starts attack, like attacking us, it's not that we're over off in Iraq and we're on somebody else's property. This is God's property. Hmm. And he is invading me. I'm going to protect my property. I'm going to protect the rest of God's property because it's significant. So that's what hit me about the movie. It was, it was taking it personal and it was saying, I'm Yeshua's. What are we going to do about that? Are we going to sit down? Are we going to make the choice to push through? And for the video, basically what she was saying was the significance is we need to remember that this is our inheritance, our life in this, this kingdom 
we are princes and princesses of the kingdom. This is our inheritance, and it is our right to defend it against the enemy. And we need to remember that he is our, on, on our home turf. And because of that, we have the advantage. There was something else. I can't remember what it was. Mm. Oh, well. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> it actually had to do with something Yeshua said, but... Uh. But one of the things that also came to me, and very much warfare, the warfare theme on this is a very crucial. As believers, we don't, and I hope, and I'll explain, we don't need to make the mistake of what we did as a nation in Vietnam. Basically, the strategy in Vietnam for our soldiers was we would take a hill. We would abandon that hill. The enemy would retake that hill, and we'd lose lives, more men taking that hill again. And then we'd leave that hill. And the thing is, each time, the hill would be more and more fortified to where, basically, we're constantly fighting a losing battle. We were strengthening our enemy by making him, and it's sort of like fighting a disease. You know, you mess with a disease enough, it mutates. And it, it becomes immune. We did that in Vietnam, and we don't need to do that in our spiritual life. We don't need to take a hill and then back off and let the enemy come in, become immune, and become stronger. Because we have an even harder battle to fight than we had before. And one of the things that did come to me was very crucial to this congregation, very crucial to me, is Jericho. Is that this congregation is called to do things that bring walls down, that allow us to go into the promised land of as she was saying, our home ground. This is our inheritance. We are taking out Jericho for what is ours, what God has promised to us. But a lot of people stop the story there. They say, they took Jericho, they have the promised land. Woo! No. They took Jericho, and then there's this long list of battles. And we as believers tend to get into a promised land and think, we have it. I have the promised land, I'm good. And then suddenly we get hit from an attack and we go, where did that come from? I thought we had this. And it doesn't work that way. You go and you take the land 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 and you take the land. And really it's not going to be until he shows up and takes out the enemy that the land is completely and totally won. And that's just how it is. We have got to be willing to be on the battlefront every day. And to understand, like I said, going back to the stones, where we're going to be hit is where there's an opening. It, it's basic strategy. It, it really is. And the strategy is, if I can hit them there, if I can make them feel like I've got their weak point and they can't do anything about it, then I've won. And what it really requires is there is no weakness that the God of the universe can't defend. And because he's in, on, in us, there is no weakness that we can't build back up. And the thing is also, if you look at it from fighting, street fighting, or you know, any kind of boxing or whatever, if you know your enemy has a wound that is healing, what are you going to do to take them down. You go right for that wound and you start hitting it as hard as you can until they go down. That's what the enemy does. You may have something in your life that's healing, but the operative word is healing, not necessarily healed. It's going to take some time to heal, but it's healing. And in the meantime, if you are doing things for God, the enemy is going to go for those places and is going to ram his fist over and over into that spot. And it, it takes basically mental fortification to say, I'm more than that pain. I, I, I've got another arm over here that has strength in it. I have that which God has given me, and I'm more than that over there, and I have enough to come back and go whack. <coughs> so, I guess the ultimate thing that I'm saying is, when you feel like the enemy has brought you to your knees, it's just an opportunity to pray. Hey. All right.
it's an opportunity to say that I'm more than, than flesh, blood, and bone on dirt. I am a spirit that can call out to the ultimate spirit of the universe, mm. which is Yahweh. And He comes in, and He makes me more. And the interesting thing is, another thing that has been going on, and first I'm going to do this, hopefully this is amusing, otherwise it'll just make me sound really nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a comic book geek, and I've done this before. I've brought comic book stuff up here, and it seemed to work before. One of my favorite characters is Green Lantern. The whole concept of Green Lantern is he fights fear, that fear is his ultimate enemy, and that when he can get past it, there's pretty much nothing that can get in his way. I over and over have been seeing, and the thing is I've been reading a, a series that has to do with a uh, concept of the ring of that the different rings have different emotions, but they're fighting death. The death has a ring, and they have their own core. Well, the only thing that can defeat it is life. And they have the white lantern core that actually has the white ring of life. And, you know, it's a comic book, so it gets a little wonky on the concepts. But inwardly, everything that I've been feeling the last few weekends is, and the thing is, when you, when you see the pictorial, it's very, very imagery. When you see the, the characters in this charge up with the energy that they basically are endowed with, it, it, it's so much on them that it is like it's pouring off of them. They're, they're like exuding this energy. And what I've been seeing for the body is us dressed in complete white like that with that energy is just coming off of us. And the, you know, the way that they fight is they just they stick that out and that energy comes, comes out. But even with the, like the Green Lantern character, he had to face something within himself and let that die so that his, the energy could actually do what it's meant to do. And that's what we're called to. We are called to allow ourselves to die and let that energy just completely indwell us. And one of the coolest things, too, is when they, they have a scene in the movie of it where... The, uh, the guy who's leading them at the time says, I don't have to tell you who you are. And they respond, we are the core. And what I saw last week, and I actually was seeing all this, I was seeing all of us dressed in that white uniform with the rings, and the rings actually being a bonding force between everybody. And I heard that same thing of, I don't have to tell you who you are. And the thing is, what they do is they raise their, and the energy just comes off, and actually they're on a planet, and the energy comes off the planet, and it just goes out to the universe. And what I saw was every congregation in the world unified as one with that energy and I heard that same thing I don't have to tell you who you are and the response was we are the body and that last weekend I know I'm a, and I've seen this before but I saw it again where the enemies where the body came into a place where they're in such unity that nothing other than full outright shaking of the enemy's realm happened that to where he couldn't hold hold his stance he was down on the ground because it was shaking so much. But what led up to that was this understanding that we're at a place right now as a body, especially in the United States, where we want to fight to get peace. And the thing is, the enemy is going to use that against us. We keep fighting in that fashion, he will keep on slamming us and taking us down. What God said to me was, you need to have peace so the battle can begin. That you need to be able to let all of this die and to let it all go before I can fill you and let this start. And like I said last week, that's what I saw. I saw everyone letting everything, and once again, it keys back into God's spirit being here, letting the flesh die. But letting that die, and then God just pouring out his energy into this place. And that's going to happen more and more. And it's, you know, because of what we're talking about, we're going to see God makes a huge impact. The enemy's going to come right back around with a vengeance. But we need to keep remembering, I don't fight for the peace. The peace is with me already. And because the peace is with me already, I'm already the victor. Is really what it is. And when the enemy comes against me, all I have to do is remind myself and remind him, doesn't matter what you do, I already win. So you should stop fighting. <laughs> he won't. 
but I already win. So I guess ultimately this is an admonishment. Hold in there. Hang on. It's going to get rough. It's going to get rougher. Sorry. And if there's anything in your mind, I know I have kind of a list in my head going this, that, something else. But what, what God's saying is, it's in your weakness that I'm strong. It's in this place where you feel so worn out that when I come in and I do something miraculous, no one can say that it's you. No one can say that it's anybody else. Everyone knows. And you've been praying for this, Adonai Yimelezot, that God's power would be known in this place. And this is how it's done. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, right now in Yeshua's name, we pray that all these different things, and I, I, know, I know that there are those in the audience who are going, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh well, God, I pray that it would have the effect that it needs to have, which quite frankly is humility. Allowing us, being willing, choosing the place of humility and of self-sacrifice so that your kingdom can rise here on earth. So we can take back that which is our inheritance, Lord God, which is the renewal of this earth. And Lord oh God, there, there was a song that I've listened to recently. It's actually talking about Yeshua. But there's a verse that talks about him leaving his mother, leaving his shop, and that his soul is so intertwined with you that he's confident in what he is to do. But then he says, In God, I pray that not one should be lost. Yes, for them in joy, I pay the cost. Oh God, I pray that we would be willing to turn to you no matter what we're facing and say, Lord, I choose joy, and in joy I pay the cost. But even as we say that to you, Lord God, I pray we'd feel the fire of your Spirit in us to where we can turn around to our enemy and say, it doesn't matter, we've won and we're not backing down. Lord God, I pray right now in Yeshua's name, as we tear down the kingdom of the enemy, as he retaliates, give us the stones, the words, the proclamations, the prayers, the anointing, Lord God, to build your kingdom over it. Lord God, and I find it interesting that this was done even as the church that we know was built on this. They would go into a land, tear down the pagan altars, and reanoint that land and build a chapel over it. Build something that was dedicated to you. Lord, we want to do that in this realm on so many levels. We want to do that in our own lives. So Lord, we pray that you would give us the capability to tear down the altars to Baal and to those things that have ruled in this nation for years and to start building over the top of that your kingdom. With the understanding that the enemy is going to try everything. And every little thing that is still needing to be resolved, he's going to take advantage of. But I pray, and most importantly, we would remember who we are. We are the body. And I pray that we would not allow him to tell us who we are. And Lord God, just knowing who we are will get us past those things we struggle with because we are your representative. Oh God, this is one of those subjects I, I really feel like it could be spoken about over and over. There's an eternity of things that can be said about your strength over the enemies because it is, it is eternal. 
But may we find that place of strength, of identity, who we are in you. Where no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Yevaret Adonai v'yishmarecha Yair Adonai p'nav alecha v'yikunecha In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Lord, our righteousness, our salvation, the Prince of Peace. Amen.